Trail Trekking Through Time A quick historical journey along the Five Pitch Trail Fifth and final stop, Grassmoor Our fifth stop along the Five Pitch Trail brings us to our final destination at Grassmoor Country Park as we travel along the Five Pitch Trail from William Fort Ponds to Grassmoor Country Park for the first time ever we do not actually follow the original railway route which went via Temple Normanton but instead pass along a once branch via North Wingfield where we pass Wolfie Pond before descending the slope into the south of Grassmoor Country Park. After passing over the old A617 the line used to branch off west through Temple Normanton and Grassmoor on its way to Chestfield, but this section is now the newer A617 Haslam Bypass. From this branch the line also continued north via Arkwright, Duckmanton, Staveley, Renishaw, Holbrook, roughly following a similar route to the River Rother and eventually into Rotherham in South Yorkshire. Grassmoor Railway Station was located alongside Mansfield Road to the northwest of the colliery site. Opened in 1893, the station was in a deep cutting, which has since been filled in and levelled off. The station building was a brick construction and a footbridge over the line allowed access to both platforms. After the station closed to passengers in 1940, the station was subsequently partially demolished but the line itself stayed open for coal traffic until the closure of the colliery. Grassmoor Country Park stands on the site of the once Grassmoor Colliery locally known as the Barnes Colliery after the surname of its founder. Prior to the sinking of the first shafts in 1846 the area had been worked by shallow bell pits. The pit officially opened in 1880. By 1896 Grassmoor Colliery boasted 60 miles of underground roadways and 6 miles of coal face and was the first colliery in Derbyshire to have pit baths which were built in 1929 at a cost of £15,000. Grassmoor Colliery merged with Williamthorpe Colliery in 1950 and the coal was then turned up at Williamthorpe. This is interesting in the fact that coal produced at nearby Hardwick or Homewood Colliery was also brought to the surface at Williamthorpe. So effectively all three collieries of Grassmoor, Hardwick and Williamthorpe were connected underground. Coke ovens were worked on the colliery site from around the time the first shafts were worked. The coking plant was modernised in 1935 with the installation of new ovens and would then produce on average 300 tonnes of coke, 19 tonnes of tar, 6 tonnes of ammonium sulphate, 13,000 gallons of motor spirit, 15,000 gallons of crude benzol and 5 million cubic feet of coal gas. Not over a week or a month but every single day. Gas produced on the coking process was piped to Chesterfield, Shirebrook and Mansfield for domestic and industrial customers. The Grassmoor coking plant eventually closed during the 1950s with the opening of a new facility at Wingworth. The Derbyshire Miners Training Centre was built on the Grassmoor Colliery site in 1952 and provided regular training for all the colliery staff around this area of Derbyshire. I remember some of my friends when leaving school would begin their initial training at the Grassmoor Centre before going into their relative colliery. Grassmoor Colliery finally closed in 1971 but the training centre continued into the late 1980s whilst the colliery site was undergoing open cast workings before land reclamation began in 1989. The training centre was then closed and became a business park until that also was finally closed around the turn of the 21st century. Grassmoor Village was originally known as Gressmoor, meaning Grey Cops, according to parish records of 1568. During the latter half of the 19th and earlier 20th centuries, the biggest employer at Grassmoor was the Colliery, who employed around 3,000 people at its height. A popular leisure facility in the village is Barnes Park, named after the Colliery owner, which was opened in 1920, and sported tennis courts, a bowling green, cricket field, football field and children's playground. The tennis courts and bowling green are now gone but the rest remains and the park is now the domain of local leisure seekers. The village once boasted two cinemas of which one, the Electric Theatre, opened in 1936 and later became known as the Roxy but has since been demolished. The other cinema had a much longer history. A small chapel built in 1877 was replaced in 1879 by the Grassmoor Primitive Methodist Church 
as the original chapel had become too small. The new church was also eventually replaced in 1899 by the current Methodist church, but the old one remained as a Sunday school until sold to the Corporation Theatre Company Limited in 1913 for use as a cinema. Later this became a billiard hall and then a betting shop. The building was eventually demolished. The eventual replacement Methodist church however still stands and is put to regular use. Grassmore Country Park on the former quarry site is now the end or start point of the Five Pitch Trail. Within the park are two ponds supporting many water species including the elusive waterfowl and many species of dragonflies. Large woodland supports many native birds in areas of extensive grassland which are left uncut until late summer allow an ideal habitat for many butterflies and insects. Grass snakes have also been spotted in Grassmore Country Park. The park has many benches and picnic areas, lots of easy access footpaths and two car parks, although the one on Mansfield Road is very small and can only accommodate a handful of vehicles. During the summer months the park buzzes with human activity and is an ideal starting point to explore the Five Pitch Trail. We have now come to the end of our historical journey through the Five Pits of the famous trail. Thank you for travelling with us.